In this video we are going to review components in Figma, how to create them and when to use them. For the video I have created a demo file and I will share it with you, so you can download it and see how everything is structured. In this file we have a big button component, I will explain later how it works. Then several icons component, so every icon is a separate component. And the component of the card. In this video we are going to create a new input component, so you'll be able to also check it out. We need components to be consistent with our design system. And it's just super convenient when you're working with the repeating elements. If you need to make a change in the repeating element, you don't have to make it in every copy. You just make it once in the master component and that's it. For example, I have the card component. And it has the button component inside it, this one. So this button in the card is a children element of this big button component. And I can change it. For example, I need an icon in the button. I can set it in component variants. Now the size has changed, but we can easily change it back. And if I need another icon, I can switch the instance. If I need another style for the button, I can change it in the components variants that I've set previously. Let's change the text and the size of the button. I've changed only one card, but all of them are changed, because they are the children of the master component that I was working with. If you are just getting started with design, you might not use the components at the beginning. For small projects, it's too time consuming to create the component for every element. But I want you to know about the components, so when you are starting to work with big projects, you know you can use them, and don't end up in the situation when you have to manually change every copy. By the way, have you noticed that Cardmaster component has only one line for title and one line for subtitle? But the card is working well with several lines also. That's because I've set the constraints and how to lay out well. For example, if I resize the card, the text is adjusted. I've made it for you, so you can download the file later and see the structure. Check how auto layout and constraints are set and how it is working for different types of content. Don't forget to check the properties also in the button. It's crucial to set the outer layout and constraints for the components right, because you are going to use them with different content. We have already discussed outer layout and constraints in the previous videos, and in this video we are going to create a component. We already have the button, so I suggest to create an input. The first thing that I have to do to create an input is to create a frame. I've created a frame and now I have to find it in my design panel. For some reason it wasn't selected automatically, so I'll set the color for the input and just reselect it again. And now I can see it in my design panel, so I'll give it a name. Now let's adjust it. I'll set the fill color to white and then I'm going to select the stroke color. Let's say bluish gray. I've set the stroke color, changed its size and now let's also add the corner radius. Now the height of the button is too big, 70 pixels. I'll set 44 as the size of my button. Now I need to add a placeholder to my input. To add a text I press T on the keyboard and add a text. My new text has automatically gotten a text style. I'll remove it now as we are going to discuss text styles later. I'll just manually set text properties. Choose regular, 14 pixels and set text color. Now I'm setting the color manually, but in the next video we are going to discuss how to set a design system with a color palette. We also need to set the constraints for the placeholder, so when we resize our input the placeholder remains at the center. Let's also move it a little bit to the left. This will be the default input component. To turn it to the component, I have to right-click the mouse and choose Create Component. Now, if I copy the component, to do this I have to press Alt and then just drag the element that I want to copy. And if I want to change something in the master component, for example fill color or stroke color. For example, I set it to grey. Now the fill color is changed in all the children components. Well, in this case it's only one children component. Ok, I removed the copy and now I'm going to create several variants of one component. So the same that you have seen with the button. I can add variants here by clicking plus button. 
I've got one more component, absolutely the same as the first one. And I've got new property in variant, property 1 and the name of this property. We need an active variant for the input, so I'll write active. And the first input will remain default. By the way, I don't like property 1 naming, I would like to have something more specific. But I cannot change it in the design panel, hopefully Figma will fix it in new versions. I can change the naming in the layer panel. Look, I've changed the name and got one more property. It happened because I've changed the naming only in one component. And I've changed it to state. And the first component still has property one naming. So I'll change it to state also. Now I have only one property. And if I want one more property, I can change it either in the main component, in the main container of the components, or in layer panel. To do this in layer panel, I just have to add a new property after a comma to the component name. Now one of the variants has two properties. I can also set the second property for the second variant. Now first variant has default state and default size, and second variant has active state and default size. Variants cannot have absolutely the same properties. If it happens, Figma will tell you that something is wrong. This is because Figma will be confused which variant it has to use. Let's now set how the active input will look like. The stroke of the active input will be different, it'll be blue. Now I choose the colors manually, but in the next videos we are going to discuss how to create a design system so all the colors are consistent. When the input is active it also has a cursor that indicates that the text is ready to be typed. Let's draw it. I'll press L to choose the line tool and just draw the line. I name it cursor. I'll make it 20 pixels, align to the center and also set the constraints to the center. The next variant that I want to set is the hover state of the input. I press plus here and I get a new variant. Look, Figma is yelling at me that this variant is the same as the first one. So let's change the state to hover. And when the input is hovered I want the stroke to be a little bit darker. I swap active and hover input. It would make more sense when we hover on the default input, we get this hover state. The next variant that we have to set is the state of the input when something is typed there. To make a new variant I can either click on plus here or go to the design panel and click here. By the way, here you can set a new property. It's not necessary to type it in the name of the component. I add a new variant. And in this case, the name of the state will be typed value. When the text is typed, we get a value instead of placeholder. And this text should be much brighter. One more state that we have to set is the validation state. It clicks when user typed something, but it is wrong. I add one more input and copy typed value, because validation happens when something is already typed. Oh, almost forgot to change the state to validation. Stroke in validation state will be red. And also I need a validation text. For now I just add it. I've pressed T and type a text. Here we have our text. Let's also make it the same red color as the stroke. It also should be smaller and closer to the input. Looks good, but look at the layer panel. The validation text is not the part of the input. It's outside of the component and I want it to be inside. So when I choose the validation variant in the children component, I'll also get a validation text. So I move the validation text to the component. Oh, it's gone. Do you know why? Because it's outside of the frame of the main component. We have several options to make it visible. First, I can just unselect clip content. Then the elements outside of the frame of the main component will not be clipped. Or I can change the whole structure of the component. It's a little bit more time consuming, but in the end you'll get much better organization in your layouts. I'm going to change the size of the main frame so it includes the validation text. But if I now change the size of the main frame, the size of the input will also be changed. So I need to create an additional frame for the input. I've pressed F and draw the input. 
tapped value text automatically got into the new frame. And now I copy the properties of the main frame and insert it to the new frame. Copy properties, pass properties. Now the input got its new frame. It doesn't fit the size well, so I'm going to fix it now. And for the new frame, we don't need a stroke and fill anymore. It should be the frame without any properties that just contains the input and the validation text. So now I can just change the size of the main frame. Or I can even set auto layout. This way the component will be flexible when the validation text is big. I change its size and copy a few times. The text became bigger and the size of the main frame is automatically adjusted because we have set auto layout. I remove text. Our input component is ready. Let's try to use it. To copy the component, I can just choose it and copy, as we did before. Or I can find it in Assets panel. I search for input. And Figma has found the component for me. It's absolutely the same component. Now I can change the variance. For example, set an active state. Or validation state. That's it for the components. I'll leave this file for you so you can download it and just play around and see how everything is structured.